it is a repeat of the 2003 final in which Gala were victorious. Melrose 17 time winners here though of course 17 out of 30 finals but not since 2018 when they beat Harriet. Melrose seeing off Kelso in the semi-final prior to that in the pool stages they put Northumbria Uni to the sword by 24 points to 10 and a resounding victory against Selkirk by 43 points to 7 Gala had a slightly more arduous route you might say they had an extra time win against Jed Forrest in the semi-finals they put Peebles to the sword in their first game of the afternoon but they were actually beaten in the pool game by 21 points to 19 against Edinburgh Ackage so here we go it's going to be Gala attacking the club room's end if you know Pointer Park it's going to be Craig Dodds to get things underway Gala to kick off and Neil Hennigan it looks like it's to be a, or it looks to be a decent final in prospect yeah no no doubt I think they have been the two best teams it, it's, you can't take that away from them so we'll see how this one plans out a tight one I would say yeah and the kick off gone the kick off dropped right on the 10 but it's been taken in by Melrose now was there a high shot in there there was a double tackle on Bruce Colvin and he's took a sore one for his troubles Colvin so the penalty's gone is gone his team's way and he looks in a bad way but Melrose are still in possession and it's that man Don Crawford and again he's kicked forward and again he's looking like he's going to win the foot race he's hacked it on and he's in and another piece of individual brilliance by Donald Crawford and the try has been awarded first blood to Melrose yeah again he just takes the opportunity to put the kick in and it's I say in, in the, when he done it the last time it's a signature move he has this time he goes all on the ground in fact no the referee's given a knock on yeah he's given a knock on so apologies it looked for all the world to me again yeah, it looked a like bit contentious for that yeah it looked like he'd scored to me from here yeah. but I think the, the AR in the, the dead ball area has, has obviously had the best view so maybe it's correct yeah. but oh well he's not been awarded the try Don Crawford but it was another wonderful piece of individual skill by the big centre and Melrose have made a nuisance of that gala scrum so the scrum is going to be reversed here they're going to come back to the same position it's going to be head and feed to Melrose so a great piece of hustling there by Melrose turning defence right into attack here and for good measure Bruce Colvin the talismanic scrum half has shrugged off the injury and he feeds the scrum he fires the pass out unorthodox fashion to Struan Hutchison and Struan Hutchison has been well harried by a Gala player and they've lost 30 metres here Melrose and, and for good measure Don Crawford's knocked it on or he's not says the referee but it's that matters not because Gala are in possession here Gala off and running and they're up into the Melrose half that looked like Pay and Pay's found Keith Young and all of a sudden Keith Young streaked up the near touch line and Keith Young and we said it was first blood to Melrose then we had to take it back it's now first blood to Gala yeah great support play there by Keith Young he's obviously got a lot of pace Keith Young an experienced winger he follows the he follows the pass and the ball there and he moves up the outside there takes the ball well off the deck good play by Pay and he goes out of the corner for a, for the opening score well taken try by Gala yeah, so against the, the run of play, the early run of play, admittedly, we're a couple of minutes in, two and a half minutes maybe, and it's now Gala 5, Melrose 0. Will Melrose become the seventh team out of seven tournaments to pick up silverware this season, or will Gala become the first team to win a couple of titles, having won their own back in the autumn? So Craig Dodds will get things back underway, and again, he's dropped that right on the 10-metre line, and the rangy figure of Andrew Mitchell has palmed it back. And it's back to Pate. But he's coughed up the penalty for holding on that fraction too long. So it's going to be Melrose ball on, on their own 10 metre line. Crawford again. Crawford, loose pass. Doesn't go the way of Connor Spence, but it's picked up by Hamish Weir. And Hamish Weir cuts inside with that trademark footwork, isn't he? He pumps the, the wiry legs and gains another metre or so. And now it's back in the hands of Roly Brett almost like a new signing for Melrose Roly Brett and he feeds inside to Hutchison and Hutchison had Makowski hearing up on his outside and he didn't see him by the looks of things now Craig Dodds has got in the way there and that's a, an accidental offside you could call it that Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he tried to evade it Craig Dodds he was in the way he tried to get out the way but the ball hit him nonetheless so here comes Brett again on Brett's has he fumbled that Roly Brett Looked like it. it. Looked like it. It did. So that's one that's gone the way of Mel. The one the way of Melrose and Bruce Colvin's up and running, and Bruce Colvin's evaded the cover. Bruce Colvin rolls back the years and dots down under the sticks, and we thought this was going to be nip and tuck. Neil, it was a tough one to call, and it's proven to be exactly that. Yeah, nice play there by Bruce Colvin. He just lines up his man, thinks I can get in for this range, and he 
he shows a McLean pair of heels in the end and gets it under the post and yeah great great play there by, by Bruce Colver as you say p- rolling back the years a bit and you'd expect that Hutchison just to slide this through for 7-5 and he does yeah he's done that so advantage Melrose so it's going to be Strew and Hutchison to try and drop it on the 10 metre line here and give the likes of Hamish Weir and Ross McConnell the chance there's again it's another great kick off and there's a contest there but it's been allowed to bounce and it's been taken in by Liam Scott and Liam Scott's been harried over the touch line by McConnell so it's going to be a Melrose line out and that's a net gain for Melrose from the kick off which was missed by everybody but it's going to be the line out it's taken in by Hamish Weir an easy man a lift pass is flung out there and it's bounced passed out to Don Crawford and Don Crawford's been wrapped up there by Dodds Gala player in over that good play there by Gala oh, that was a penalty there yeah, I'm sure for but... me Liam Scott the trademark <laughs> signature move of Liam Scott and Melrose still in possession though McConnell it's fed out to Bruce Colvin again and he's creating a wee bit of space for Crawford and Crawford's fed Makowski Makowski's off here and Makowski's the latest to go in for Melrose dots it down and all of a sudden Melrose back in control of this tie yeah, yeah, they, they certainly are and, you know, Gala a bit unlucky there just hustling at the breakdown, Liam Scott and he just didn't get a reward for it and Melrose take full advantage, Mikowski's got a great pair of heels on him and he goes in there for a, a nicely taken try and puts Melrose in the driving seat His fifth of the afternoon he certainly excels when he's got a bit more open prairie in which to work and another good conversion there 14 points to 5 against Gala, there's seconds left There'll be about enough time for the kickoff in this first half, and that will be that. So Hutchison again will look for his his runners, which will most likely be McConnell and Hamish Weir. And Weir again is under that. It's been taken though by the Gala player. That was Pay. This time the scrum half is Taylor Wilson to Craig Dodds out to Peffers. And a good afternoon's work, Scott Peffers. Cuts back in field, well tackled however by McConnell and has that been stolen by Melrose? It has and it's back on the Melrose side and it's McConnell in possession, McConnell's been hit hard in the tackle, good hustling there by Gala but there's a, oh, dummy, outrageous dummy at that by Bruce Colvin and we spoke about rolling back the years, he rolled back the years, he rolled the dice there and he went through there like a hot knife through butter and he's in for a second. Yeah, I think... Just there at the breakdown, Melrose coming from the side, and it, for me it was a penalty, but again the referee's not seen it, and Melrose then sniff blood, and when they get the ball into Bruce Colvin's hands, he's looking at it, he's got the confidence to the last score, he throws a nice dummy, and then he just pins the lugs, and really, with this conversion, if it goes over, it's a long way back for Gala. Yeah, if it goes it was, over... And it, it has, has indeed yeah. 21 points to 5, and out, out of nowhere after Gala scored admittedly against the run of play Neil Melrose have taken complete control when you want your big players your talismanic figures to step up Bruce Colvin has done exactly that and that was an outrageous bit of skill yeah it was beautiful and you know he's, he's obviously got that in the locker you know five six years ago he was he had a lot of pace as well to go with it and he was one of the best nines in, in seven rugby around here at that time and he's still got a lot to offer this Melrose team off the pitch as well as on it and you know for me he's been uh, so far he's been the standout player in this final Makowski's on five for the afternoon Don Crawford's on three now Colvin's up to two as is Struan Hutchison and Archie Pilcher so they've spread the tries around and another great kick off this time they're taken in by Gala through Taylor Wilson lost his footing a wee bit Wilson but he's given it back to Craig Dodds and that's a great kick pass right on the money out to Young Young's found another or he's back he's got it back to Dodds Dodds to Pate now to Taylor Wilson we spoke about him before this athletic young forward got a bit of running so as this man Liam Scott and McCavan has come on for Gala looking to use his bulk to free up space perhaps he takes it to deck they're still in their own half Gala going through the phases and they've won a penalty yeah. Oh, and the ball, no, the ball's been left there. That was smart play by Don Crawford. So here come Gala now. All the, all the, t- the possession for them so far in this half, and they need it. Will, uh, Keith Young. Keith Young takes it into the half, and that's as clear a penalty as you're likely to see. Conceded by Harry Makowski. He came round the side, and Gala have got a man over towards the far side there. It's McCavena relying on the skills here and that's a good flat pass but just went a wee bit in front of Liam Scott and he had to 
ducked down to take it and lost the impetus. So Gala though still in possession and they're going to score here. Gala, they're in. That's exactly what they needed. I think that's Peffers, you know, as I mentioned earlier, is a good afternoon's work. Scott Peffers, and he's in for yeah. Gala's second try, the final, and they're back in it. Yeah, Scott Peffers has had a good afternoon and he, he finished that off well. He, he uh, kept the support going and it was hard work, but they got there in the end and it was vitally important they got the first try of the second half to just give themselves a lifeline and they brought this final back to life. They have indeed, and the kick is good at that. So, Melrose 21, Gala 12. Gala right back in this, and they'll be looking for one of Craig Dodds' trademark kickoffs that give his runners the, the opportunity, the likes of McAvena, who's come on. He's made an impact so far, McAvena, when he's entered the fray this afternoon. And then, oh, he's dropped that right on a sixpence, and McAvena's under it. Oh, McAvena got a big mitt to it, but he's palmed it forward. It's eventually been picked up by the referee, and he got to that McAvan and maybe, maybe just a wee chance goes a begging to get some possession back for his team yeah I mean if they could have got the ball back at the first time you're asking there and you know get, get a momentum swing in the game you know that's what they need the next one to do that and they need it quite quickly so Melrose will know what they're going to do here try and slow it down a little bit and keep possession they got the shunt on from the scum Galavitz came back on the Melrose side now it's Don Crawford Crawford's got Makowski outside him but Crawford's off and running himself here and he's going to create a two-on-one situation with Makowski in attendance Don Crawford McCra Crawford draws the last man gives it to Makowski good defence by Gala back inside to Crawford though wonderful try from deep Don Crawford's fourth of the afternoon and they've hit back just like that yeah Donald gets on the outside there his man and he puts the afterburners on and nice bit of patient work there to give it to Makowski who you would have thought might have had the pace to finish but good defence they managed to get the ball back in there and, a, and a, who followed his pass Donald Crawford and uh, yeah Dutch down for gives Melrose a bit more breathing space again in this final and that was a good try for pretty much the length of the field yeah great try for Don Crawford I, I swear he gets half a yard quicker with every passing season while, while others lose half a yard Struan Hutchison has missed the kick on yeah. this occasion Melrose on 30 Kings of the Sevens points not including what they're going to pick up today so they're going to go out to minimally 37 you'd fancy it to be 40 with Erlston looming on the horizon tomorrow but Melrose could emerge from that tournament with nothing of course and that's the beauty of the knockout tournament where they play Edinburgh Aki's in the first round now Hutchison's went deep with the kick off and Peffers is inside his own half here for Gala, the recipient of that kick. Fergus Johnson's on now. Craig Dodds out wide to Wilson. A wee bit of space has emerged for Gala here on that far side. And it's Liam Scott. Liam Scott herring down the touchline. Still got possession here, Liam Scott. He's got Roly Brett trying to drag him down. And Brett's got to him eventually over the 22. But it's been lost by Gala and gobbled up for Melrose. Now they could create an overlap here through Will Ferry. Melrose attacking up the pitch here towards the uh, towards the changing rooms here in the second half but it's been fumbled Gala a bit unlucky there you know Liam Scott done really well there if you could have finished that off we could have had a grandstand finish here but it wasn't to be that's one thing you get with Liam Scott guts and heart and he will run all day but it's Melros in possession and there's a two on one again and Struan Hutchison may not need it Struan Hutchison's over the 10 metre line Fergus Johnson's done well to get back to him Lovely inside pass, it's been hacked forward by Makowski over the try line. Makowski drops on it and Makowski's in. And that, Neil, is most likely that with little yeah. more than a minute on the clock. And Makowski brings up his six of the afternoon. Yeah, yeah, that Melrose have been really good in this final. I think, you know, in all honesty, I think the, the, the semi final against Kelso and then this tie, they've really went up a gear. They've meant business today and they, they fully deserved it. And, you know they've timed things well they've had a bit of luck when they've needed it and that's what it's all about you have to generate your own luck and they've deserved it they've been the best team here today the most consistent no doubt about it and uh, that was a good score just to, to uh, probably see this final out now yeah made by Hutchison scored by Makowski and for good measure Hutchison strokes over a wonderful conversion to take Melrose out to an absolutely unassailable 33 points to 12, lead with about half a minute left, you, you're right Neil, they've done it the hard way, they, they beat a decent Northumbria University team in the first round, they, they comfortably dispatched the Selkirk in their other pool tie, and they beat a very, very competitive Kelso team in the semi-final, so they will emerge from this tournament as deserved winners, as Hutchison takes the kick-off, it's palmed back by McAvena, so 
chance of some consolation for Gala, uh, Gala here, but they're inside their own 22 through Peffers. Peffers created a wee bit of space for himself, but he's hauled down just outside the 22. Russell Kerr's on, he's in there with the scrum half duties. So they're still plugging away here. Gala battling manfully as you'd expect. No Gala team will ever give up. And they've got there's an out, there's an advantage being played here, and it's fed out through McCrum. Russell Kerr's off and running here. Russell Kerr's going to go. He's got support, but the ball's gone to ground. It's going to be mopped up here by Lachlan Johnson, who's on as well. Another kick pass by Craig Dodds, and it's another beauty right into the bread basket of Lach uh, of Fergus Johnson. Fergus Johnson's going to try and take Hamish Weir on the outside. That's a high shot if ever I've seen one by Hamish Weir. And there's a yellow card coming. So that brings his afternoon to an end. It won't matter as he'll wander away here with a medal to add to his cabinet. And has there been another player yellow carded? Don Crawford's coming up the touchline. No, I think he's been substituted. Oh, and, La and Scott Peffers has been yellow carded. For what, I do not know, but I can only assume a bit of chat. So it's 6 v 6 <laughs> Let's hope this doesn't descend into a bit of a farce no, here. But Melrose now are off and running again. Good bit of running at that. And Struan Hutchison, it's gone into Struan Hutchison's bread basket. A bounce of a rugby ball. And to round things off for the Green Yards man, one of the men of the tournament, Struan Hutchison's in for another try. Yeah, beautiful finish to the game there for Struan Hutchison. Uh, he just follows the game. Beautiful line of support. Picks up the, the bouncing ball and he... He romps in, he wrapped this final up. So he does indeed, Struan Hutchison. Melrose have won this final comfortably against their near neighbours Gala by 38 points to 12. That takes them from 30 points in the King's table to 40 points. They take the 10 points on offer today. Gala move into second by virtue of the fact they have 7 points. That takes them from 23 to 30. The Edinburgh Brackies who are on 29 Hoyk have made a move today, Kelso have got another five points, as have Jed Forrest, but it's Melrose who are the Kelso Sevens champions 2023 and deserved champions at that. We got better as the day went on, I think we, we, we probably peaked at the right time there. Um, certainly the first tie against Northumbria was probably not the, the prettiest of, of ties, but we, we spoke about getting better, but, uh, better and better tie by tie. and. and yeah, evidently we've, we've managed to do that and come out the right side of it finally, which is, which is really good. Uh, and this, this result, of course, means that you've become the seventh different winner from seven tournaments this year. It just shows you how competitive this Kings of Seven circuit has been. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Look, there's, there's numerous teams that on any given day can, can go and compete there and we, we're under no illusions of how, how difficult each game is and um, we're just really happy that we're, well, I think we've been in two, two previous finals this year and, and never come out uh, winners. So to finally kind of get that monkey off our backs really good and, and look it's it's great for some of the young guys in there that, that have just kind of stepped up and they've not really gotten to experience that winning thing that sort of disappointment of coming second time after time and for them to finally win something's really really good how impressed were you with your team performance today and of course for you two tries in the final <laughs> no it's it's almost uh, doubled my try tally for the whole king stuff but no look it, it, it's it's a it's a squad effort it's it's not just the 12 that comes here on the saturday or 10 tomorrow on the sunday it's 18 20 guys that are training tuesday thursday then management and coaches and physio that are all buying into it so look it, it, it's a real win for the, the collective there um everybody's put a bit into that today and and thankfully we got, got uh, rewarded for it.